The due diligence, yeah. the insane amount of preparation, everything that goes into each and every week that is Major League Soccer. Fans will never understand that. I won't understand that. And maybe they shouldn't. But I think what's, what's interesting in the conversation, Mike, is that the hours that you guys collectively put in before you even step on the field, right? Bef just in terms of, of I'll call it pre-preparation. Because the preparation, I think, is ultimately on the field when you have your, your hands on the players on the grass and you're able to have you know your your setup and your your cones and your sticks and I'm not even going to talk about set pieces and <laughs> corners and all of the little nuances that yeah. are within the course of the 90 minutes. But I think one thing that's got to be because again I look at it from a different angle when I see when things are going well and then when I see when things are going poorly nothing changes from a coach's staff's perspective. It's, it's not as if you guys prepared better one day to go out to execute <laughs> than you prepared true. You, you prepared to a lesser extent or worse for when you guys, when, when the players on that day aren't at their best. So is, is, I guess to slightly pull back the curtain, that's got to be mind-boggling that you guys can c prepare all week and put all this together and then when it comes down to execution, how are you not throwing your toys out of the pram? Because it's my fault. When, but and it's not cliche. That's not cliche. It is my fault. Just like I remember doing, and I hope we're not getting off topic and I'm no, talking too much. I remember, I think it was eighth or ninth grade. I did a report on the Exxon Valdez spill. Remember yeah. there was a tanker? Yeah. Yeah. The, the driver got uh, drunk and they hit something and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. One of the biggest pollutions ever. And I remember the moral of the story, which I missed, by the way. I did this whole thing, and I missed the whole thing. And talking to the teacher, um, the biggest thing for Exxon Valdez was they, they didn't respond publicly. They didn't, they didn't step out mm -hmm. for like three days. Done. Done. Because no matter if the They'd guy was the drunk, trust, yeah. not only that, no matter if that guy was drunk, somebody hired him. Mm -hmm. No matter if uh, the, the weather was bad, somebody didn't sit there and, 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 and communicate to him, wait, you're going into bad weather. So it always goes to the top, and I'm talking about the weather guy. I'm talking about um, the, the, the guy that the hired the drunk guy. Him, yeah. It all goes up to the CEO in that company or the owner of, the, of Exxon Valdez. He was the one that got hung out to dry, which he should have. You could argue you should have or not, because no matter if he had any clue about that stuff, he's in charge. Mm -hmm. So when it's a long story, a funny eighth grade story, or a down a reminiscing down eighth grade lane, but it comes to the point that the reason why I say it's always my fault is because I'm preparing the team. I could say I prepare them the same every week. I could say it's very detailed. If they don't perform, mm -hmm. of course there's individuals that maybe you could point to privately and say, hey, what happened here? Look yeah. at this video. But I'm in charge of it. Yeah. So that's why I always have to be held accountable for that. And I'm okay with that.